For example three, I have copy and pasted the question here into cell B3. I, you can just randomly put it into any cell that you want. I just tend to like to not cram it up in the corner, but you're welcome to do that. I'm going to highlight across, you know, maybe five rows or so. And then up here in the toolbar, I have the merge button. I'm going to go ahead and click on the merge button. And you'll notice that it takes it from being five separate cells into being one cell. So it merges them all together into being one cell. If I double click on it, I can edit. You see, I can move the cursor around. And, and that just helps me with making the formatting a little bit nicer. And then also took the chart that they had in, in the question and I, and I typed that up in here. So notice here it says George has 3115 in coins. So there's two ways to do this. You can look at it in terms of dollars, it's 3115, $31.15. And you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight these cells. I'm going to come up here to the toolbar where it has the align icon and I want to center. So I'm going to choose this centering. I just like to center things. Now if I did it in pennies, how many pennies is $31.15? That's 3,115 pennies. So it's a common trick is to, when you have money problems, to change all of your money value into pennies so you don't have those decimals. But the trick is that you have to remember that you're in pennies. So if you get 500, that's not $500, that's 500 pennies or 5 bucks. So just something to be aware of. So I have 31.15 in coins. And the where I'm going to get that from, I'm going to go ahead and highlight these cells. And up here in the toolbar where it says borders, I'm going to choose to make those into where I'm making a little chart of table. So you can see I've put a border around each of those. So I have this borders icon and I can choose how I want to do my borders. So when I go in to fill in the value of the coin, so I have a quarter, I can either put it in as 0.25, a nickel is 0 0.05, and a dime is 0 0.10. Now when I'm using Excel, it doesn't, or this is a spreadsheet, um, Excel is a spreadsheet, when I'm using a spreadsheet, it really doesn't matter if I do decimals or, or not decimals because the computer is going to do the math for me. But I'm going to go ahead and stick with doing it in pennies, just like the example gave. So it's 25 pennies, 5 pennies, and 10 pennies. So that would be the value of the coin. So over here, I'm going to put 31.15 as my total value. You know what? I'm going to highlight all this and center those also. I just like things centered. Now I type that number in. I'm going to come up here to where I can change the shading of the cell. It's like a little color palette. and I'm just going to fill in the background in yellow so I can remember that that's a number that I typed. Now these 25, 5, and 10, those are not going to change. I'll do those in maybe green or something because a quarter is always 25 cents. That never changes. So I'm just going to leave it. So now as I read this, it says, George has five more nickels than quarters. Five more nickels than quarters. So the nickels is, so I'm going to start with the nickels. I'm in the nickels column, and the nickels is equal to the number of quarters. So I click on, in this case, C8, which is where the number of quarters is, and I multiply that by, excuse me, I don't multiply, I would add it to five. I have five more than the number of quarters. The nickels equals the number of quarters, that's C8, plus five more. So I'm going to push enter. So right now the number of quarters that I have, I'm going to go ahead and shade that yellow. I don't have any quarters in, so nothing plus five is five. It says he has seven fewer dimes than quarters. So this is going to equal the number of quarters, so I'm going to click on quarters, that's C8, I'm going to minus 7. The number of quarters minus 7. I'm going to push enter. So it says I have negative 7 because it thinks that I don't have any quarters. Now how do I get the value, how much money do I have in quarters? So this is going to equal, you always start with an equal sign when you're trying to get the spreadsheet to do some math. It's going to equal the number of quarters, so that's C8, times the value of the quarters times D8. So I have C8 times D8, that's how much money in quarters I have, which right now is nothing because I have no quarters. Same for the nickels. This equals the number of nickels times the value of a nickel. And then this equals the number of dimes times the value of a dime. 
Now I'm going to equal, below here where it's total value, I'm going to call this sum. Sum means add. I'm going to say this equals SUM. So what the spreadsheet has actually has a lot of functions built in where it automatically can add things up for you or uh, look up numbers, give you the biggest number, the smallest number, the median, all kinds of uh, mathematical functions are pre-built into a spreadsheet. So that's actually pretty cool. So I'm going to say this equals the sum. I want to add up the value of the quarters, nickels, and dimes. So notice that I just highlighted from E8 to E10 in parentheses and I push enter. So that adds up to negative 45. I want to add up to 3,115. So I'm going to write a little function here. This equals if, and I love the if function because it tests things for me. So if, parentheses, so if this 3,115 is equal to the negative 45, which right now it's not. So if what's in cell E11 is equal to what's in cell E12, I'm going to do comma. Now this has to go in quotations because I want it to tell me a word. I want to say correct. So I put the word correct in quotations. Notice the comma. So it's if E11 is equal to E12, comma, say correct in quotations, comma, Otherwise, if they're not, put wrong. And then I'm going to end the parentheses. So this is an if statement. So you say if, and then you say what you want. And if, it's, if it comes out true, then you tell it what you want it to do. And if it comes out false, then you tell it what you want it to do in that case. So comma. So notice 3,115 does not equal negative 45. So it tells me that it's wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to guess. I'm going to just start throwing random, what if I had eight quarters? Well, then the amount of money that I'd have is 275 pennies, or $2.75. And that is wrong. That is wrong. In fact, let's make this bigger. Wrong. I'm going to, if I go in between here, E, column E, and column F, I can hold that down. Notice that the cursor turned into a little arrow, and I can make it a little bit wider so that it says wrong. So I don't have anywhere close to enough. That's only 275 pennies, and I need 3,115 pennies. So let's maybe change that up to 80. Okay, so 3,155, it's still wrong, but it's too much. Before I didn't have enough, now I have too much. This is called interpolate. I'm interpolating my numbers, so I'm just trying to, like, I just put a random number in there. If it's too high, I pick a smaller number. If it's too small, I pick a bigger number. And I just kind of weasel my way into getting to where it's just right. So 80 is too big, so I'll try 70. 70 is too small, so my number is going to need somewhere between 70 and 80. How about 75? Not enough. 76? Still not enough. So I'm looking here at this 29.95. Color that pink. It's it doesn't match and it's too small, so I need a bigger number. How about 78? Not big enough. 79. Ah, there we go. Correct. You see here how this told me from my if statement? It says that I am correct because I had 79 coins. And it, once I added up the values, that equaled the value that I wanted it to equal. So that's one way to do it. It's not very algebraic. A little bit because I did write formulas. So if I double click here on C10, it's going to show me the formula that is equal to C8 plus 5. So that's that's my formula, to making sure, for sure, I have five more nickels than quarters. Guaranteed. And when I double click here on C11, I can see the formula, or excuse me, C10, I can see the formula is that it is the number of quarters, C8 minus 7. I always have seven fewer dimes than quarters. So that's how I would get that.